Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel! Peter likes books, and I am back for another, look, this is the, this is the steering wheel, 10 and 2. I am back for another car vlog, because <clears throat> I felt like it, I felt like it today, and I just got done reviewing the most amazing drink in the entire world, the McDonald's, uh, oh my husband just uh, sent me a little wave <laughs> emoji. Hi! <laughs> uh, the most amazing drink in the entire world. <laughs> Go check out my review on it. This is the uh, peppermint iced mocha latte or something like that. Look at that. That's peppermint turds on the bottom of it. But anyway, I just finished a book, um, an audible book, and I just started another one. So I thought, why? it is so nice out today. It is 64 degrees. I thought, why not do a little review and a little car vlog. So um, here you go. I'm doing a little review and car vlog for you. Um, yeah, and I have my Starbucks and I have my McDonald's. So <laughs> I've got so much drinks for you. So much drinks for you. Uh, all right, here we go. You ready? I just finished Soldiers of Fortune. No, 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 Hurricane Force, book seven in the Gina De Leon series. The Misfortune series. Okay. I know that you guys are probably so sick and tired of hearing about this series. But hands down. And if you've watched my booktube channel for a while. You know that I'm not somebody that loves um, series. But this series. This series. Number one is the best series I have ever read in my entire life. Number two. It is totally changed my interest in reading series. Not Siri. Siri? Sometimes when I say that, she comes up. Is that her on my car? Siri! Hey, Siri! What? No. Goodbye! Hey, Siri! Can you beatbox? Okay, cats thank and you. Boots. Goodbye. I can do this all day. Goodbye. No, thank you. Goodbye. 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 That's my favorite, though, so much. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the only thing I use Siri for. I don't know how else to use her. But anyway, somebody taught me that years ago, and I think it's so funny. I love that so much. Okay, but anyway, so... I'm not somebody that loves series. In fact, I started like the Marissa Myers Lunar Chronicle series and I read Cinder and then I didn't read the rest of them. And I liked Cinder a lot. And then the Harry Potter, you know, I, I feel like I, that's walking through a, a, a really heavy swamp with quicksand, okay? Like the books are long. I kind of think the Harry Potter books don't come for me. You almost kind of have to read them. I mean, J.K. Rowling, she's just made a total fool of herself, hasn't she? Anyway, this year, this has not been a good year for J.K. Rowling. But I almost kind of feel like you re have to read the Harry Potter books when you're younger or something like that. Like, I like them when I'm in them and I'm reading them, but they're so, they're, they are, talk about an investment, okay? And I'm just, like, not that into it, and I'm not that into the movies or anything either. So, I just don't love those. What are all the other series? Oh, uh, well, I read the duology, Lee, Lee Bardugo. I read the first one, um, Six of Crows, and I never finished it and read Crooked Kingdom because it's, I don't know, 29 hours long and audible or something like that. I said I was going to, and I never finished it, so I need to finish that. But I haven't really read a series before that I could really get into, and it is hot. It is hot potatoes up in this house. Um, let me turn my air on a little bit. Max air. Okay, air conditioning. Um, last year, I said I really wanted to get into like a mystery series. And all of these people started recommending books to me. And th this was like literally like, I don't know, like six months or a year ago. Because I ended up buying one of the Jonathan Kellerman books. Like the very first one, which I think is called When the Bow Breaks. Because years ago... I had, I had started a Jonathan Kellerman book, and he has a whole series about this, like, psychiatrist that gets involved in these, like, murder mysteries or something, and I had read this one, and I can't remember what it was called, but I really liked it, and, even though I never finished it, and, uh, so, 
I didn't want to... St I didn't know, like, what mystery books to read. I liked Michael Connelly's Void Moon, but I didn't, like, the Harry Bosch character, I think, is kind of boring. So, I didn't really want to read the Harry Bosch books. And there were, I mean, there's so many mystery series, and there's so many series you can get into and things like that, right? That I was like, I don't know which one to read. So, then I started talking about the Cozy Mysteries and Dorinda Jones and all that kind of stuff. And somebody in my comment section, I think it was M. I don't know, okay, but whoever you are, thank you so much, recommended to me the Misfortune series by Janet DeLeon. I think it's DeLeon or DeLeon or anyway, I feel bad not knowing. I actually sent her a message on Twitter because I was so thankful for these characters. I'm so thankful for these characters that she um, created and this world that she created. I mean, talk about world building. Like, to me, this is the kind of world building that I really enjoy. And... I have not, like, I can't even tell you guys, like, I haven't even been this excited to watch a TV show on Netflix. Like, I am so into these books. I, like, I just started, so I finished the seventh book, which is called Hurricane Force, and I uh, just started the J.C. Duggard book, A Stolen Life, because that's our book for the book club this month, and I want to make sure that I have it read, um, which I've read it before. So anyway, a lot of people are complaining about that book and saying, they don't like the narration of it. I don't think the narration's that bad. I'm kind of a little bit into it at this point. But I've also listened to it before. Do I think it's the best narration in the entire world? No, not at all. But do I think it's okay? I mean, I think it's fine. But I will tell you that I think, like, on Audible books, of which I listen to so many, I really do think that, like, the narration really makes the book. So speaking about, like, the uh, Gianna Delion books, the Misfortune series, um... Oh, shoot. What's her name? Um, it's the same the same narrator for every single Misfortune book. And, like, to me now, in my mind, in my mind's eye, like, that is the voice of Fortune. Fortune Redding, who's the main character. And I'm, like, like obsessed with... I, I feel like every book, they say it at the beginning, narrated by... It's, a, it's like Carissa... Carmichael or Carissa Carpenter or somebody like that. Anyway, I want to give a, I should give a shout out, so I'll have to pull into the gas station up here. You guys, I have never been this obsessed with something, but I mean, I have, obviously, <laughs> as a person that's been sober for 25 and a half years, 25 years and 10 months, but I haven't been this obsessed with anything like any books, movies, TV shows, anything in a long, long time. Like, I don't even, like, I am so into it. I don't even want to read anything else. I don't want to watch anything else. All, all I want to do is just read these books. Like, I, it's weird. It's almost kind of weird, okay? And let me just tell you something, and this will not ruin it for you. And listen, if you're going to read them, you have to start on book one and go all the way through. But I will tell you, book seven, everything changes. And <clears throat> I was kind of wondering... When, um, like, some things were going to come out in the book. Because, I mean, okay, so, well, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But I've already told you, it's about this woman. And she's an assassin. And she works for the CIA. Oh, my God, my spot that I always pull into to, like, check things out. Somebody's sitting there. How dare you? That is so rude. You are so rude. <laughs> anyway, let me pull in here. Um... Let me see who narrates these books. So I want to give a little shout out. Text my husband back while I'm at it. Hey. Okay. I don't know that I can see it, y'all, without starting it up again. All titles. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to Google it. Who... <laughs> who narrates... People are probably shouting at me. Narrates the Miss Fortune series. I know it's like Carissa somebody or something like that. Louisiana Longshot... Don't want the Kindle edition. Form Kindle audiobook here. Okay. 
it doesn't say on here. <sighs> Cassandra Campbell! Cassandra Campbell! I was so close! Okay. She is such a fantastic um, narrator. I absolutely love her. And she's so good for the part. And having been somebody that picked, an, uh, picked a narrator for my book um, when my book was on audio, um, it's not anymore right now because we're between publishers. So, um, you can't find it. That's why it's my book is like $800 on... Um, <laughs> somebody said the other day, they were like... Um, why is Peter's book so expensive? They put in the comment section of one of my videos. It's like $800 on Amazon. And somebody said because he's famous and people are trying to like get money. I'm like, oh yeah. Because I'm so famous that people are selling my book for $800. Don't buy my book for $800. You're stupid. I have my, I read my entire book this year on my um, booktube channel. So that anybody that wanted to listen to it could listen to it for free. What is that? Oh, Christmas music. I'm so down with the Christmas music right now. But anyway, um... She, like, I really feel like the narrator can sometimes make the book. Like, Bonnie Turpin is my hands-down favorite narrator on um, Audible. And I'm starting to think that Cassandra Campbell is maybe a close second. She's so fantastic. So, anyway, I am just so taken by these books. Like, I want to move to Sinful, Louisiana. This town, I don't know. It's just, like, so quirky and weird and fun and simple and slow pace. And the mysteries are so well thought out. Like, they're not predictable mysteries. Like, every time I think that I have it figured... I mean, I honest to God, I thought I had this last one figured out. Every mystery, like, there's always some twist to it. She's a fantastic mystery writer. Fantastic mystery writer. And, you know, I've wanted to write mysteries before. And they're not, like... You have to really, like, from page... From word one, know what you're going to do. They're not really books that can, like, develop organically. You kind of have to know what you're going to do. I know that I'm completely in the dark right now. I apologize. You have to kind of know what you're going to do when you're writing them so that you can, like, they can develop over time. And it's like, I had all these different ideas for what was going to happen with this book, but I can tell you where it went was not what I thought it was going to be. I mean, I had kind of feelings about some things, but the other thing is that's really cool about it is that it's always about... Um, Fortune, the main character, and these two old ladies, uh, Ida Bell and Gertie, or Gertie and Ida Bell, who are, like, trying to solve these mysteries together. And the thing is, that's so fantastic, is she kind of lets the reader figure out the mystery as they're figuring out the mystery. So, it's like, it's not like she holds something back that she kind of throws out at the last minute. Like, you could totally figure it out if you were like, really a great, like, I mean, they're not like the deepest mysteries in the world, but they're deep enough that, I mean, they hold their own to like, Agatha Christie and stuff like that, definitely. And probably even more intricate than that. But it's always with like, these small town characters that you would never guess stuff from. So, they're so interesting. You guys, this is the best series I have ever read. I was just thinking about this right today. I was like, you know, like I've read some really great books this year. I mean, the Grady Hendrix book that I read, um, the, what was Southern Book Club's Guide to uh, Slaying Vampires. Like that was such a great book and so well developed and, you know, Educated by Tara Westover was a great book. Where the Crawdads Sing, I said, was my new, like, favorite book next to Kill a Mockingbird. Which I have to say, it's weird. I don't know what it was in this book, but I had some kind of, like, vibes of To Kill a Mockingbird. I was like, I wonder if Gina DeLeon, if, like, that's one of her, like, favorite books. Because I felt like vibes of that when I was reading this last book. Um... But, uh, if it was, like, one of her favorites. But anyway, then, um, what was I going to say? Um, but, you know, I've read all of these really fantastic books this year. Um, and I have to say, like, I was trying to figure out, like, what my top ten books were going to be. Because, you know, I always do, like, my top ten best and worst books of the year. I don't really know that I'll have a top ten worst list this year. I've read some amazing books. Oh, by the way, oh my God, I just did 68 books, which is the most books I've ever read in a year. So even if I don't hit 100 books this year, which is my goal, I have made it, I will, with this next book for the book club, that will have been my 69th book, and that will be the most books that I have read in a year in the last seven years. I'm so proud of myself. Oh my God. But anyway, um, what was I saying? I don't remember. I was thinking to myself, like, what are going to be... What's going to be, like, my best book of 2020? And I think that I'm just going to pick this series. I think this series may... It's either going to be this series or, um... 
what do you call it? Where the Crawdad sang, or the Grady Hendrix book. It's one of those three, um, and, and it's gonna really depend. I mean, I'm really gonna have to think about it. Um, cause you know, for me, like I've been giving all of these misfortune books five out of fives. And the thing is, is that I don't usually give a book a five. Like I said that I changed my rating system because like, if it was just a really enjoyable read, but there was nothing profound in it, like where the crawdad sing, there was a profound, like some like messages in there. And I even feel like that with the Grady Hendrix book, that there were some profound messages. And, but then asking yourself, like, are there profound messages in these misfortune books? Well, really they're just very much like cozy mysteries kind of thing and I was like well maybe they don't really have like a deeper meaning and you know when you look at them and you read them overall it's about do you choose career over friends and family do you, what is meaningful to you in your life what does your life what represent like who do you want to be going forward there are a lot of deeper ideas in this and I was like you know what like I think this is probably this might be my favorite book of the year like I might have to just pick the whole series and call it my favorite book of the year, but I don't know yet. We'll, that, we'll find that out closer. I mean, I may read something in between now and then. But, um, and I think she's also going to help me maybe possibly reach my goal of 100 because I'm finishing these books this year. I mean, like, after I get done with I'm just powering through them. I'm loving these books. They are so fantastic. I cannot, I literally cannot say enough about them. And I've gotten so many friends of mine in my personal life to read them too. And um, it's been a hard, it's been hard sale, but they have been reading them or they've started reading them. And um, anyway, I'm just so thankful for Jana Delion for creating these characters. I think she is a masterful storyteller. That's what I said to her. I do. I think she is an incredible. It's one thing to write amazing characters. It's another thing to be a fantastic storyteller. But to be able to do both, to write like in-depth characters, create in-depth characters that hold. I mean, every book just gets better and better and better. It's like, I, I, I honestly thought by like the third or fourth book, I'd be kind of bored with it. But like they just, like when I read, um... Magical Midlife Madness. I loved it. And then I read Magical Midlife. It, it, I didn't love them as much as these, but I loved them. Um, by K.F. Breen. And then I read Magical Midlife Dating. And it was good, the sequel to it. But it wasn't as good as the first one. Like, every book in the Misfortune series just literally gets better and better and better. And the characters get more fully developed. And, um, I mean, it's just... And, it just, and honestly, like, this is the thing. Is that these books literally, literally literally seem effortless. I mean, I don't know how she writes these books. I don't know how long. She's putting out like two of them a year. So I don't know like how hard it is for her to write these or where she comes up with her ideas. I would love to have a cameo role in a book if you're watching this, Jana. Oh my god! I would love to, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just some, some small cameo role in a book. But anyway, um, I don't think I've ever had a cameo role in a book before. But anyway, um, it's just, they're just effortless. They're just so fantastic. I'm so thankful to whoever recommended them to me, and I'm so thankful. Well, it was more than one person. A lot of people recommended her books to me. And um, I'm, I, honestly, I'm excited about finishing this series. Well, I, she's, the series is continuing, so it's not like stopped yet. I think her last one came out in August of this year for this series so it's continuing but like she has other series as well which i'm excited about trying i just want to continue in this series until i finish it so listen i will say this i don't i, I don't know if this will be the best book that i read this year but this is hands down the best series i've read this, this year and you know how i feel about series i always said i don't like series i like standalones and this series this series changed it for me it was everything I was looking for in a mystery series. I cannot put it down. I just want to read the next one. When I'm in the middle of the one I'm reading, I'm, I'm wanting to read the next one. You know, it's so, they're so unbelievable and I'm so excited about them and I love them. So this is hands down my favorite series of life. And, um, you guys should put in your comment section below. If you have a favorite series of life, let me know, um, which one you think that I should read next. You know I have a lot of series downloaded, so I'm like into this whole like mystery series thing. I'm like eating it up. I'm loving it now. So anyway, um, I've also got the Janet Ivanovich, the first book, and I have the Dorinda Jones from the, the Graveyard one or whatever, that one, and 
I have all these book series. The um, the Allison Brook one um, about the the haunted library. I like that series too, but there's only four books in the series. Um, but anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you have not read the Misfortune series, what are you doing with your life? Like seriously, I'm telling you, like I haven't like. And the thing is, people are tweeting me constantly now, and they're like, thank you so much for this recommendation, Peter. Thank you so much for talking about this series. Um, I haven't had one person say, like, I read the book and I didn't think it was that great. Not one person. Every person that has started to read it has been like, oh my God, I love these. They they are that good. They stand they stand on their own. Why these are not bestsellers, I will never know. And maybe they are, and I, I'm not aware. But um, I don't think they are. They're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. So, anyway... Um, they're just so endearing, and there's kind of like, honestly, too, like a Golden Girls kind of quality to it when they like sit around at the end, and they're like, she's always like in her hammock at the end, drinking a beer, like reading a book, or she, they're like sitting around the kitchen, and they're having like a piece of cake, talking about the mystery. There's always that kind of element to it, which sounds stupid, but it kind of really like wraps it up, and, and like, you know... Uh, it just, it bookmarks the book so well, and I love them. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with the series, and um, Misfortune, <laughs> or Fortune, and uh, Ida Bell and Gertie. I mean, they're just, they're characters I will never, ever forget in my entire life. So, anyway, favorite series of life so far. It might change, but I don't think so. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.